<laughs> All right. Well, it is 6.30 and it is Labor Day. And um, thank you all for taking time uh, out of y'all day to uh, join us here as Rain, Sleet, Hell and Snow. We will be mic'd up and ready to go at 6.30 every Monday. This is my commitment to you, uh, the community, and um, I want to uh, thank you all. And so I know what it is, the holiday it is Labor Day, and so this is a labor of love. And so what we will get uh, started to do, we do have Miss Angela Payne on, and we do have Miss Jane Williams and and and, and uh, Mr. Dennis Francis. And I'm going to just start by saying that, um, you know, we do so little. People say, we don't do anything. We don't do anything. That's fine. But then when something happens, they call us to get something done. <laughs> and that is team me, we. Okay, let me just say that this is not a Corey Reeves thing. This is, please, I will be remiss to even just take that credit. And so, because this is a collaborative effort and this is a team effort as because it was either Monday or Tuesday, I got a call from Miss Jane Williams and um, about an event <laughs> that was happening. She said, oh, no, honey. She said it was all the shambles and uh, um, they just some unexpected things happened. They, 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 have, they properly planned for this event well in advance, February, March of this year. It gets to a week before this event happens, a situation happens that was beyond their control. So mm -hmm. I want to start by saying that first. They did properly plan this out. But things didn't work out. She called me. Um, I called them that later on that evening, about probably 10 o'clock. And then the next day I called my general. General Levin, can we, can we mm -hmm. handle get this thing, thing done? And this has to happen. And what is this? Is the world's largest black cycling event in the world now mm. taking place right here in the city of South Fulton. Wow. And it's called the One Love 100th Century. It is, again, the world's largest. And I want to reiterate that right here in the city of South Fulton. Mm. And so we just had to make that happen because, see, they properly planned it out. They did everything they were supposed to do and just beyond their circumstances. But it was the efforts out there from <laughs> a, a, a city of South Fulton influencer, Miss Jane Williams, who put in that call. And then we went into work and then uh, we gave them the, and they gave me the honor of giving them uh, the uh, one, uh, love one love, the one love salute. And I was, I felt honored about that. And she said, that's her special guest. And uh, we also have Miss Angela Payne on here tonight. But before we get to that, I really want you to talk about this event, but I'm going to let Jane Williams introduce you because that's who brought it to our attention here. And so I will be remiss. But go ahead, Jane, introduce your special guest. And then, Mr. Francis, mm -hmm. you go ahead and just tell her what it's all about and mm -hmm. what do y'all do? Well, thank you so much, Councilman. And I want to thank um, Mr. Francis for coming on tonight and for contacting me. And uh, I mean, this was, a, they did everything they were supposed to do. And he didn't even contact me in the beginning. I was like, okay, well, if you need anything, let me know. And so when it actually, when he saw that it was going, was not going to come through, he contacted me. I contacted Councilman Reeves. He did his contact, and voila, the event was a success. Mm -hmm. So I am so happy that they are even here in the city of South Florida. So I just want him to come on, and he wanted to come just to say his thank you event. And anything else that he want to say about the one love? Uh, thank you, Ms. Williams. Uh, I, I lost my voice this weekend. We had so much fun, so bear with me. I got to start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to Corey Reeves. Corey Reeves, you know how to get things done. And Tamiko Leverett, man, is a superstar. She was so professional. She was so efficient. And that's a reflection of Corey Reeves. So thank you for that. Um, you know, the One Love has been going on since 2006. Mm. And we, we, we used to hold it on and, at Stonewall Tail Elementary. So we've been in South Fulton before, before South Fulton was South Fulton. I am a South Fulton resident. I am one of the two public defenders for South Fulton. I used to be on the ethics board um, of South Fulton, appointed by District 1 Representative Dr. Roll, Foster Roll. Uh, so we want to stay in South Fulton. We love South Fulton. And it is 
cycling is the new thing amongst black people. And mm. I, I, you know, I just wanted somebody to see it because you got to see it to, you know, to experience it. And you got to see what, how people love it and what it's all about. We are a registered 501c3. Um, after we pay all our bills, we capture about 6% to make sure we have enough money to go forward and, and put on the event the next year. And we donate the rest of that money to cycling related charities like mm -hmm. um, what's called the Bicycle Race Across Georgia Dream Team, which takes um, youth from inner cities and we teach them how to cycle long distances. For example, they cycle in camp one year from the King Monument in Atlanta to the King Monument in Washington, D.C., wow. uh, about a 500 mile bike ride over a seven day period. Um, we also sponsor the uh, Dick Lane Velodrome in East Point, uh, East Atlanta Kids Club. Um, there's a group, there's a um, youth cycling group out of uh, Macon. So that's what we're all about. We are, we are a cycling club that's 36 years old, started here by some individuals that owned a bike shop in uh, South uh, DeKalb Mall some years ago. So we are all about riding and supporting people that ride and supporting people that want to ride. And we're going to get Mayor Corey Reeves on the bike real soon. And every year we see people come back and they go home and they tell their friends about it. This year we had a group of 27 from the U.S. Virgin Islands and they're coming back and they're bringing more. We get people from Jamaica, uh, Kenya, England, and they love the one love because it's all about love. It's a five day event. Now, not every day is in South Fulton. The two main days, Friday and Saturday are in South Fulton, uh, but you know, people love it. We had over 1700 this year. We're only restricted because it's so volunteer intensive. We can become much larger. We are the largest uh, all black event in the world, but we could become much larger. And we're only limited by our volunteers. So I just wanted to come on and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can answer any questions that you have about the One Love Century, about our cycling group, um, any, anything you wanna know. <laughs> all right, I see you. And uh, people love uh, the event again. They love the location. We were at the Georgia Renaissance Festival which we believe is in the city of South Fulton. It has a Fairburn address, but we believe it's in South Fulton. And we were at Wilkinson Mill Park, which definitely is South Fulton on Friday. And just, just one point, if you sign up for any cycling event in the country, any event, they're, they're no less than $65 for any event, but all you get is that day, that event. When you sign up for our event, you get, a, you get five days. And people are starting to call it Essence Festival on Bikes. And that's what we have here. And I just wanted somebody to see it because when you see it, it's, un it's unbelievable. So I, I Absolutely. I'm gonna have one correction. I have one correction. Cause you see, I, I ain't taking the wrist mans off right there neither. That, I see that. been all weekend, you know. We don't went to Stone Mountain, we don't went all over the place. I'm a cycler, y'all. I am a cycler, I am a cycler. I'm telling you, y'all, this is about it. One correction Yeah. is I'm not the bear. I was saying the mayor pro tem. I was like, Mayor Khalid is the mayor. He's duly elected that as our mayor. That's the mayor of the city. Exactly. And so I was just filling in. And so, you know, I mean, as the mayor pro tem. <laughs> right. I had to get that. I just want to give that correction out there because that, that's my mayor. He's my mayor. And right. so, um, but however, but this event right here, y'all, we going to own this right here. I want all five days. Y'all have to understand something. It's one love, baby. You had to be in the atmosphere. Right. And there are, there are several videos on YouTube from going years back. You can see it going all the way back. We started in 2006 and there are a number of people are this year's videos are starting to get uploaded now. But there are a number of videos. You just you just you just Google or YouTube One Love Century and you'll you'll see you'll see the videos. I'm going to do that bike where I, I get is I'm getting fitted for a bike. Um I with my boy Bear uh, Gillis, uh, Courtney Steele's also too. Is he was a part of this as well? Because uh, I did call him and had him reach out as well. And to, um, it was just a collaborative effort. And so this is what Team Me We is all about. Is you know we need to get things done. It's not just me. It's 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 a whole. <laughs> it's our influencers. It's everybody here on this. And for this to to almost not take place uh, would have been a tragedy. It would have been a disaster. Y'all have to understand something. We, the city of South Fulton, own this. And they are day ones from the city. Your partner crime, y'all been on since day one, since May 1st, 2017. 
they have been with the city of South Fulton. And so, but y'all know I'm extra, right? So get this. Y'all think y'all just going to have this event and then we just not do it extra and just put it on. It's the world's largest. I mean, you, yeah, we'll see next year. So we did bring the folks around. And so uh, uh, I just want y'all, anybody who got a bike, anybody who does this, it's, it's something that you would definitely want to come get a, uh, and be a part of. Uh, y'all got another event going in, in in November, Ride Jamaica. I think I'm going to go join that. And so I'm just excited about, you know, I got my official shirt, y'all. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm a cycler. I'm a cycler. So anybody got any questions for Mr. Francis? And so, you know, and come to find out, you know what I mean, as, as, as what was about 22 years ago when you was with the Fulton County? Probably as um. Probably. Right. I was in print. I'm in print a bit and I used to do the business cards. And so I remember his name from down when they was at the uh, uh, uh solicitor's office. And so it was during that time that whole Brian Nichols case was with the public defenders. Right. And so it's uh <laughs> full circle, I guess. But right. you know, this is how long we've been, you know, uh they, they, he's been at it forever, and you know, how long was uh we had previously contacted and you know, crossed paths before. So uh but anybody have any questions, please, you know, Ms. feel free to Councilman mm-hmm. Reed, Ms. Angeline Payne. Is on Go ahead, Ms. Payne. Um, I did not see this event until you uh, put it up on Facebook. So what advertising uh, venues are you utilizing for the citizens? Uh, that's a question for me. Yes. Yes, we actually do not advertise uh, the event. Um, we, we send out an email to let our uh, registered riders from the previous years know that registration is open and we sold out in about 28 days. Uh, so we have been sold out since June, um, since about June 16th. And we and we we try to control the growth. So we grow about 10% a year, but that's only because we're a club of about a hundred members and we try to have personalized service at the event. And it's just, it, and it's very taxing on our on our on our members because it's a five day event. Um, mm-hmm. So right, we actually do not do not advertise. Our advertisement is when people come and it's the first time they've seen it, and they go home and they tell all their friends for an entire year. We will get emails from now until next year asking, please, when it, registration opens, let me know. Um, please save space for us. Uh, it is just, you know, it, it is unbelievable. Okay. But we would like to let the community know, and I think we can, you know, what it went. If we want a partnership with the city of South Fulton, and if we get that partnership with the city of South Fulton um, through um, uh, Councilman Reeves, then yes, we need to let the community know that this is here. Come out and, and partake. Excellent. This is this is Tamiko. I am going to say one. Thank you so that's my much. Super, for that's my superstar right there. <laughs> and I felt like it when I came out. Um, yes, we are going. I already have an email queue in two weeks to give you time to rest. Thank and, you. Uh, talk to you on helping you get ready for next year and helping put some stuff in place for you. So, um, yes, he's correct. They, this is happening all by word of mouth. Mm-hmm. So imagine if we actually promoted the event. So we're going to try to get the city on board and and support it and um so stay tuned and everybody get your bikes ready <laughs> I'm to tell you. Y'all, anybody know me y'all know i'm extra so yeah we're gonna promote it for sure i have a question Hi. for attorney francis yes Go ahead. Uh, my name is mass sergeant retired basedon and i wanted to know if your organization when you raise these funds for cycling clubs do you also assist those disabled veterans who need special recombinant bikes but don't have the funds to do so? Who wants to ride? We haven't in the past. We it been, it's mostly been focused on on youth, uh, but we are always open to accepting new beneficiaries. As a matter of fact, last year we just accepted the youth group out of Macon. So, and we have a number of, of um, retired veterans in our club. You know, see our club. Like I said, our club is thirty six years old. So we actually have an 85 year old woman that still gets on her bike and rides. So uh, we are we have a number of veterans in our club, and and that's something that we're always looking for uh, new places to donate our funds and our efforts. 
And so we have a number of people that will be interested in that. So if, you, if we can contact each other, we can start that process. We take it to our board and, and we vote on it. Uh, okay. So how do we get this information to you or from you so that we can make uh, recommendations for uh, those that we know that needs those recombinant bikes? Yeah, I can put my uh, email and cell phone number in the chat right now, if that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Uh, thank you so much for that information because uh, can we talk offline because we're looking at something for this year on Veterans Day um, and we might, we do want to tie that in. And so, um, because I do, you know, as my pops is a retired disabled vet and, you know, we do a lot of things for disabled veterans. And so, um, shoot me that your information. Let's talk offline about something uh, this year for Veterans Day. So I think that's okay, awesome. sir. And thank you for your service as we appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your support. I think I, I think I heard her uh, attorney Francis saying that she wanted to um, potentially volunteer and and help you for next year. I think I heard that. Didn't didn't you hear that too? <laughs> uh, you need to get your ears cleaned out because I'm overtapped here. I am the current CEO for Southern Crescent Veterans Services. And right now we are inundated with influx of homeless vets in our area and no resources. Mm. Oh, tell us about your organization. We don't know about it. See, oh. tell us. Um, it's Southern Crescent <laughs> Veterans Service Incorporated. We're a 501c3 nonprofit service here in the Peach State of Georgia. Um, we uh, pride ourselves in being champions for all vets, but we mainly focus on homeless vets and youths. Hmm. So, I, I, you know, to that point, there's one of our brother clubs called Velo Atlanta Cycling Club. And they used to hold what was called a sleeping bag ride. And instead, in lieu of someone paying a, a registration fee, if you brought a sleeping bag or something to donate to the homeless, um, that would be your entry into the ride. Uh, they discontinued it for some reason from some years ago, but I thought it was a great concept and they would have it in the fall as getting close to that time when people really needed it. You know, I would be glad to reach back out to them and see if they that would be something they might want to start back up. Yes, that would be a great benefit to us because right now we're in the process of doing backpacks for homeless where we okay. collect an in-kind items to fill um, the book okay. bags with I, things that they're going to need for during the winter. And a sleeper bag will be a plus to add into right. the bags. And, and we can get you um, backpacks also. One of our members is with Must Ministries and he can, he can get access to we We have donate, we donate to the homeless um, uh, quite frequently. So we can get that. I, I put my information in the chat and we can set that up. And also our next event is gonna be a um, prostate cancer awareness ride. It's actually out of College Park in Clayton County, um, but I would definitely like some people from South Fulton to just come and just kind of see you know, how we do things. I mean, we, we love to ride, but we like to help out as well. And if we can ride and help out, that's the best of both worlds in our opinion. Well, that'd be excellent, but I'm currently in here in Clayton County, but I do have um, partnerships that are in Southwest Atlanta. Okay. Okay. Well, my information is right there in the chat. Okay. After the meeting, I will reach out to you then. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. You are. And also, um, uh, Master Sergeant, I have backpacks. If you need some backpacks, I have plenty of backpacks and I can uh, go and get some donations and have some things put in there if you would like that. Yes, I would. If you put your information in the chat, I will send you our list. We need 200. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Yeah, I probably got about 20 or so backpacks right here right now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And also, a uh, number of times we have leftover items from our events and we donate that to churches and to the homeless. So we have a lot of water a lot of the big gallon um, jugs of water in our storage unit right here on 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 um, Welcome All Road. I can, you know, it just sits there until we get it out and donate it. So if you want it, it's yours. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're having another event that's going to be in Southwest Atlanta on the 17th. It's called the um, Veterans and Family Stand Down, which is a one day event um, built on the model of the three day event that was in Indianapolis, where we bring all the homeless vets in the area that needs. Uh, services to our location for 
dental screenings, uh, mm -hmm. HIV testings, AIDS testing, haircuts, okay. foods, and stuff like that. Okay. So yeah, we that's can, coming we on can. the 17th of September. So I can send you all the details. Okay. Okay. Let's connect. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Reed says Continue. that's organic. <laughs> I said, as Councilman Reeves says, that is an organic connection happening right there. So um, I want to take a moment to introduce uh, another organization. Um, and so if you can, um, Ms. Payne, tell us about your group. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Angel Payne, I'm the Chancellor of Black Wall Street Institute. And we have a program that has four tenets to it. Uh, we work to make this program a holistic program. And uh, we were talking a little bit before about our community and how we believe that everyone that's 18 and older should know uh, more about our community, more about behavior, but we're finding that that is not as such. So with our program, we have a economic stabilization planning program, which helps to get an individual uh, together uh, as a person so that they can, can, can function along with a group. So we start with positive cognitive behavioral education. And then we um, bring them into our personal financial literacy, teaching them how to handle their personal financing. And then we get them acclimated to finding a job and or career that's going to sustain them as they're going through their life journey. And then we make sure that they find not affordable housing, but sustainable housing. Housing is your foundation. That's where you launch all of your ideas and your family ideals. And we wanna make sure that we understand that you have to have a strong foundation to be able to do the other things in life. So you're not so stressed uh, working and uh, getting your finances together and moving every six months and, you know, trying to reallocate yourself and thinking that life is going to go smoothly. You got to have a good foundation for that. And then making sure that you know that you are 100% responsible for your behavior. No one else is responsible for your behavior but there's some things that you need to learn about you and how you became you so that you can be able to navigate that. So our program is a Saturday and Sunday program. It is gender specific. We only have women in a class. We only have men in a class because we handle things mentally a lot different from each other. So to keep down a lot of the uh, arguments, we only put those genders together so that you're there to listen and learn and then to be able to put the things that you've learned in action. Uh, we've been in the South Fulton area for over seven years. We every month we work with a group of individuals even though you are learning on an individual basis you are in a group and we take on about 20 to 30 students per month and get them acclimated into our program so that at the end of the course you get a, a certification saying that you've been through the course of what you've learned and we follow you from that point on, we've had some very good success uh, with our students. A lot of times individuals come to us and they are broken because I mean, they've had it, they, they don't know any way out of their situation. So when they come to us, we're working with them in a group setting, but they're getting an individual therapeutic solution to what's going on with them. And we've had individuals who've gone through domestic violence and ending up owning their own business, helping people who are 
in that area as a coach. So the program has experienced a lot of success and uh, we do integrate our program with some other things that we do. Uh, we have a third breakfast that we do at the Piccadilly's, helping to patronize our businesses in our area where we come together as South Fulton residents and talk about some of the issues that's going on with us. And this uh, month of September, we are having it, we're gonna move it to the 24th, which would be the fourth Saturday. So we have more time to advertise where we're gonna be talking about family rights. Our whole effort uh, with Black Wall Street Institute is to bring together African-American families to help us to rebuild our family structures and get us as a community under a better guise of working within our communities, bringing Big Mama back to the community, uh, making sure that our police are welcomed on our streets and that we once again see them as our friends. And when we have a need that we make ourselves available to our community police and to make sure that our moms and our dads have the support in the community that is needed when they're off working and doing the things that that need that all eyes are on our greatest prize, which is our children. Absolutely. Family health is uh, family wealth. And so, um, Thank you, Ms. Payne, for you and your organization and what y'all are doing. Yes. And um, we appreciate uh, all that you do and all your efforts. Uh, any questions for Ms. Payne and her, about her organization? Want to join, come out there and talk about it. If you know anybody, tell them to come join on the next conversation. Um, a restoring I have a question. Mode. Did you say where to register or where to find the information? Mm -hmm. We are an online class. And I did put my information into the chat. So you can give me a call. And then our, our next class, I'll make sure that the link is available. And then you register online uh, when I send the link for the class. Absolutely. And I believe last week we had a, um, yeah, so anybody want to come in and join that class, please let's, let's, let's do that. If you know anybody who want to join that class, please send them around as well. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, camp, we have so many people with so many organizations doing so many things right here in this area to address okay. some of the needs that's right here in this area. Uh, mm -hmm. We're sustainable in our efforts. And so um, that we must look within first, but first always look within thyself. And that's what I do for me. I don't look nowhere else. I look within and you know, <laughs> myself first and what is it that I'm doing or see corrective action that needs to do it and, and take so and then do it. You know, sometimes a different set of eyes is looking at you and seeing things that you can make an adjustment. So when you're in the game, uh, you're in the game, you're in the moment. And that's why you have people out there in the booth and can, be, can look and see the things that you can't see. And so uh, don't take it as uh, criticism, take it as constructive. And then, you know, uh, but look within yourself as your, your way is not the only way that's called dictatorship. And yeah. so, you know, that means that everybody has something to change. And so, uh, if you have people around you and that are telling you that you believe in and trust in, trust their advice, trust yeah. them. You know what I mean? Believe in them, believe in what they're telling you is the right thing to do. I don't think that they would try to steer you wrong in any kind of way. So, uh, like, again, I'm, I'm all, you're going to forever hear me saying is collaboration wins championships. Mm -hmm. Almost definitely. Competition wins trophies. I don't want a trophy. I want a <laughs> championship. I want that ring. And y'all deserve it out there. Y'all put this team together. So we're going to give you the best efforts that we can give you. And so, okay, but go ahead. I would also like to iterate that uh, this Thursday, the South Fulton Human Services Coalition will be having their monthly meeting over at the Gladys Denard Library at 1030 in the morning. 
and we are a bridging organization where we bring the nonprofit businesses and community together. And of course, we talk about a lot of the issues that are happening right here in South Fulton, a lot of the services that are available to the citizens here in South Fulton and any and all of the businesses that are here today, if they would like to attend that meeting, we would love to have you there because that's how we find out about what is happening in our South Fulton and uh, organi uh, excuse me, community and what services you have available and how we can connect to each other to assist each other. That's awesome. Because one of the things that we are gonna be talking about is, I'm sorry, y'all. I just have to, I just have to because I just, this is me, if you know what I mean is, you know, I people put me on the island by myself. I do think beyond and outside of the box, that's okay. I don't care. And so is because I do look at the market and I do read and I do uh, uh, see what trends are coming. And so this past week, did anybody hear the news with Rob Pitts? did commissioner rob pitts did oh well let me tell you let me tell you let me just say this is that he did uh put out uh, took arpa funds a million dollars of it and put those that says we're going to address affordable housing does any take a wild guess on how did he say he was going to address affordable housing oh, my let us know <laughs> Oh, well, let me just let you know then. Like, you know what I mean? He says he's going to put a million dollars from the ARPA funds to attack affordable housing in the form of what? Tiny homes. Todd, Todd, I... <laughs> so, Isn't we do that have a homeless problem. We do have a bedroom problem out there. And we do want to understand something that this model that I was talking about did not just fall out of pie out of the sky. It is an actual model that exists in current cities. One mm -hmm. city in particular down is in Savannah where they have uh, tiny homes for big heroes to address the veteran homeless problem right here. As which this lady just said that she came on, Master Sergeant Basin came on and said that this is what they are in homelessness. Not only do seniors face this problem, but they're homeless veterans. And I'm gonna tell you like this, and I'm gonna attack that issue every single day of my life because how is it that the people who very well fought for everything that we are doing right now and allow us to continue and come back out there and we allow them to be homeless? That is unacceptable. And Thank we don't you. have a plan of action in place. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little excited right now because see, I was on myself, but no longer because see, I know that the market was gonna dictate on what was coming. And those who attended, get this. Now, I would, I'll take all the hits, okay? You know, I'll take, okay, communication about it. I'll take, I'll take all of that. But we had corrective action measures. And then we did this little tour. Remember this little tour right here? Remember yeah. This tour? See, mm -hmm. understand something. It's cottage homes with the tiny home footprint. You know, within those cottage homes, it's not a tiny home village, as somebody was saying, because y'all was misinformed. But we went ahead and got the 30 cc's of education and understand people that we're coming and we're coming back with that. And so to address this very issue, not just with seniors, but also too for our homeless vets. And so uh, Ms. Bazin, I'll tell you, you have somebody who's on your side. And uh, that's why I say, let's have an offline conversation because uh, that being said, and the combination of Commissioner Pitts announcing that with the combination of the land that he's talking about that fits it is in South Fulton, so particularly in the city of South Fulton, is we're here to address these issues. And I like that word sustainable housing because affordability is whatever you can afford, right? If you can afford 300, afford 300, if you can afford 125, afford 125, you can afford $10, afford $10, but sustainable living is something that keeps people sustainable in their communities and in their network and in their ecosystem, you know, uh, and, and the price points that fits their uh, needs. And so as I like that, that sustainable living, mm -hmm. but understand that it's in a new form of homes and the square foot is a home being built. Some people can only use 250 square feet as when people went and saw what a 250 square foot home looks like. It wasn't the ideal and what their head was. It was actually reality in which somebody lives in it now currently. And that's all the space that they need and desire. But there's other form pairs up to a thousand square feet as well. And so it's, uh, but then you come with space and yard space. I love it. 
it's an ecosystem within an ecosystem. And so um, we will be bringing that back. It never went anywhere. But I just wanted to share that with you guys today as I think that's key and critical because that is meeting the needs. And so I worked on this over two years ago. But however, it's here now, we're here today. I do not I do not cry with spilled milk. I do not look at and live life through the rear view. As I focus and weave forward march, we just make some adjustments. That's all it is. And now it's uh, in the playbook, you know, the game plan is here. So um, it's time to put the X's and O's uh, in place and go execute. All right, anybody want to say anything, go ahead. I have a ahead. question. Absolutely. What What is the game plan that, that Commissioner Pitts announced? I didn't see that. We didn't see that. You hold on, Miss Map. I'm gonna send this to you personally because I thought that you would have been the first person to get this right here. As because I even asked for you to even be on the city commission for his um for the county. So I never heard from them. Interesting. We'll follow back up, but I will send that to you uh uh so you can have it for yourself. As um send it to me I, today, please, so I can dream on it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you was the first person I had in mind to. I said, oh, I can't wait. I can't okay. wait. So, yeah, so, details, so yeah, please. Yeah, oh, I will. Absolutely. I, I certainly will. And um, and you said it was a million dollars. Yes. He, he put it out of the ARPA funds now. Now, mind you, now, you know, these ARPA funds, since we're on this right here, y'all want me to get ahead and talk. I thought I was going to be here about 15, 20 minutes because it's a holiday. I know y'all want to get some barbecue, some potato salad. And so, um, but the ARPA funds is also, too, to help people with eviction, though, I mean, you know, rental assistance, right? But do you know on there you can't have an eviction to be qualified to get some of the ARPA funds? Do y'all know what's going on right now? How many and, people are getting And, and, and that is one of the main issues that we're having, not only in your area, but here in Clayton Henry County. Majority of the veterans who now are homeless are the ones who are working and have jobs and can afford to pay for a new place to call home. But because of the months that they were out of work and they fell behind on mortgages and they was already in the pipe to be evicted, those were the first one pushed through that funnel and they're now evicted. They can't mm -hmm. rent anything else because of that eviction and nobody has $15,000 to pay past due unpaid mm -hmm. evictions. Now, does that make any sense when those those people, those same landlords is getting the money out there as well? That just doesn't make any sense, do it? Well, it, it, it's like it, you're it, designing something to create a problem. Create, well, the information a was a solution, funnel to everybody. Problem. That's the problem. They pay for advertising when they're running for offices and stuff, and they send out bukus of junk mail to every mailbox in the U.S. Mm -hmm. for the state of Georgia. But when they have information that can save and impact lives, they don't push that advertising out the same they way. Know. So for those who are struggling, they will never get the information until it's already happened to them. And that's how and our they reallocate it. That's, that's certainly what happens. Thank you, Master Sergeant Bates. You're welcome. Right. And so, and so, team me, we, how are we going to change that? Because we need to change that ASAP. Because we need to make fun. sure that anybody who has been evicted from 2021 to 2022 have a, a full clean slate, just like we did for the people that had uh, college tuition so they can start over and have a second chance. But I can't do that. It's up to the elected officials to push that to the people that can make those decisions and get it done. Yeah. So that's out there from the state. And yeah. I need to find out how are we going to have that corrective action? How can we do it? One is if we can do that as a municipality and set those parameters for those that there are in the city within the technical boundaries of the city of South Fulton. But how about from the county aspect of it? Because so I'm saying that, that I, I, to answer your question, Ms. Miller, but I, to get more in depth with that idea, reach out to uh, Commissioner Pitts to set up a meeting with him to discuss this further because this is one of, uh, uh, as General Leverett had brought this to my attention, is like, you know, is, how does this even, how is this even possible? Because, you know, we always give you facts to thrive upon. And so we want to get those facts and to say is that how is it that this is even, it's oxymoronic to me. Now, you know, I'm just a guy from, 
Grady Hospital. I don't know, born and born rich, but you know, <laughs> somebody out there somewhere has some answers because that just to try to make sense of this. You have a fund to help people, but the people you're trying to help cannot help because they're automatically disqualified because under the restrictions y'all had to utilize these funds. Mm -hmm. Disqualify them. And That's right. But you're trying to say you're helping them. You also How mentioned impossible? dollars and a million dollars is laughable. Well, because you know, even, that's, that's even all the problem well. that that huh? Master okay. Sergeant Basin is talking about, a million dollars is not going to pay all the funds that she's going to need to get those veterans back into qualification. Consider so, that. So this is what I'm saying. This is the bigger than a million dollars can handle. Right, but this is the brain trust. What I need for you out there to collaborate them on is give me the solution that I can go and take to this meeting with him to take these to take these uh, ideas of uh, you, Miss Mathman, you, uh, Master Sergeant Basin, have that we can go up here and address this. Like how to best utilize these funds and what uh, subject parcel and what project are y'all looking at undertaking, and what is that million dollars going to cover and how many from the metrics because I, I like metrics is how many people give me the number of people that that's going to affect and I and he's he's committed to it now and so I think that this test pilot is is that because if he can commit those funds and then we can take and redirect to commit those same funds to help people then I think that's a winning effort and so then that means I think that we can you know ask for more and utilize more as I believe if we come up with the right solution, uh, I think that we can make this work, but it comes from the brain trust of you because I, I, I think that y'all have expertise in that area, in that manner. Um, and particularly uh, with our veterans and our seniors. And so I think that these are uh, 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 two uh, groups uh, of people that are getting hit the most hardest and is gonna need our help the most. And so, you know, as, as well, we still have others for families and, you know, millennials out there for people with kids and things of that nature, as I do believe that uh, uh, that's a need as well. But the focus that I'm having is these is for these two primary uh, homeless veterans and then our seniors, because I know two seniors getting evicted right now, getting kicked out of their homes right now is because of the market rate. And this is right here in our community. And so all I'm saying is we have to address this. And I'm calling all our realtors, uh, our realtors and everybody and everybody else, loan officers, is we need to have collectively, how can we come and address this problem on this issue? We can't for the whole world, I wish we could for the whole world, but for this area, for where we are, for our ecosystem, within our ecosystem and our footprint. And so, um, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need to get that information to get with you guys and we need to get that brain trust together. And so it's uh because we are here to uh keep people healthy and within their ecosystems and so um for their mental health as well. So I think that that's key. All righty. So I have one comment and then we have a question. Our um guest scheduled for next week is Mr. Um Johnston, who is um the executive director for the cottage homes program that is in um, the cab microlife institute and he has um, another a couple of other projects so he will be coming to talk about the difference between a tiny home a cottage home and some of the pros and cons um, on both sides so that is our guest speaker for next monday wow. um, now um miss payne has a question um, I'm really making a statement. Uh, one of the things that we have to realize is that why do we have the restrictions that we have on these funds when they are announced and coming into our community? A lot of times, and I know a lot of people don't know this, that when those restrictions are put on funds for things that are good for our community, we have this problem where these funds are being reallocated. They do come down to the South and they are talked about what they're for. But once again, the people who they are for do not qualify for them. So they take those funds and reallocate them outside of our community and put them in stewardship of one of the universities that is in uh, the Northern Chambly area. 
and then we no longer have access to those funds. So we do have oversight committees who are looking at exactly following along where these funds are and then making sure that those restrictions are removed from those individuals that are supposed to be qualifying for these programs. But that's only gonna come from the people. The people have to speak up, but they have to be educated on what's actually happening. And knowing what's happening, of course, is the beginning because someone wrote those restrictions into that proposal. And we need to make sure that before those restrictions are put in there, that our voice is being heard and that we have to get them to understand that you can't qualify someone and then immediately disqualify them and reallocate those funds and state that you're doing something for the people. Policy. And you're I agree exactly with right. Saying, yeah. Everything that she said, they've already um, put the restriction in so they can deny the people that really need the funds the opportunity to get the funds. And you're exactly right. And so policy, and that's why I recommended one of our own uh, to the senior committee that Fulton County has on the chairman pitch. And so I'm going to follow back up as they just said they haven't heard back because, see, we know that people like that or uh, 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 subject matter experts have those because you have to be in the table, at the table as they're writing the policy for it. And so, um, but yeah, we have some corrective action measures on that as but let's see how we can circumvent that as, you know, that's just another hurdle. And my belief is, how do you get over hurdles? One at a time. And so it's, uh, uh, yeah. but they'll keep throwing up. And so we'll just keep going over. Go ahead. Does anybody have such a question? Yeah, Ms. Glenda, I did get that. And I will be sending that to you as well. And Ms. Uh, Master Sergeant Basin as well. And no, all the tiny homes will not be at the, within the city of South Fulton footprint. Some of them will as they had space uh, allocated, development authority of, of Fulton County has uh, land throughout the re entire region of Fulton County, expanding all cities from North and South Fulton. But speaking of that, uh, I will just say this to get this plug out because these people put in the work, not just in work as in contracts, but work as in philanthropic efforts as volunteers, as we talk about that as uh, all-star cleaning. ASC. And so uh, you need have home cleaning out there certified uh, in the state of Georgia. Uh, they do household mold and cleanups. And, you know, they specialize in fitness centers, hospitals, schools, restaurants, homes, retail stores, banks, and commercial offices. And so All Star Cleaning Services. Miguel Torres is president and CEO. Uh, Tamiko, if you have the information, put that in the chat box because uh, to meet all your cleaning needs. And I don't even normally shout this out like that, but at the same time that uh, when we talked about <laughs> volunteers and need the volunteers, they, they also are willing to volunteer uh, and provide that as, as well as their efforts uh, to the programs, to things that are going on here within our city to help uh, further the cause and further the need. And so um, we need to grow, we need volunteers. And so they are willing and so, and they also have a business and they're here within our ecosystem. And so um, I believe our collaborative effort is going to pan out in some small way, shape, form, or fashion, because we are here connected together, but we are connected helping each other, as proven by this past weekend. And so as proven right here on this call. And so um, we're going to meet this need, because I think we absolutely have to and address this head on. Anybody else? They all tell me we're gonna get out here early. We're gonna get out here early today. Uh, anybody else got some little barbecue chicken, some fried corn, some you know what I mean, something like you know, fried green tomatoes, you know. That's funny. That's only at the uh, fried tomato buffet if you're going for all that uh, southern delicacy. No, oh, okay, that's we'll get it. I like cuisine too struggling. now. I like cuisines too now. You know what I mean? If you got some sauteed cabbage out there, some roasted Brussels sprouts, I say, hey, get this. I'm game. You know? So it may mean it's at your house and we're coming to see you next. Okay. Well, about that situation right there. So, you know what I mean? And so it's, uh, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't get a chance to do all that right there. So it's, <laughs> but however, 
We <laughs> Hold it. This is uh, Tamiko. We will be having some community events coming up. So I know that there's, uh, you know, <laughs> to where we will be, you know, being able to showcase some of our uh, uh, chef's talents and things of that nature. Anybody got any events, community events coming up um, that they want to let us know about? Any festivals, any ball fest, any chili cookouts, any cleanups? <laughs> Uh, here's your opportunity right now. Let's go ahead. It's a labor of love. So, talk All righty, this is Tamiko. I'll get it started. So um, this Friday, um, we will be having, the city of South Fulton will be having the first responders event, which includes the um, police and the fire and rescue dedications and support. That'll be at the Southwest Art Center at 11 a.m. Followed by that evening, 6 p.m., will be the final tournament for fire versus police um, in their kickball championship, in which fire is looking to do a full sweep. They've already won the basketball and the um, flag football tournament. So we'll see who wins. Um, that'll be 6 p.m. at the Burdett um, Field. They'll have also the um, uh, final bingo community uh, bingo event in the community center. And so that'll be this coming Friday, September 9th. Um, Facts to Thrive is also in the process of scheduling a small business summit for existing business. Um, it was originally scheduled for the 20th, but the date is being moved to the following um, Tuesday. So that um, flyer and link will be going out tomorrow. Um, I think that's the main two that we need to get out for today. So any other organizations that want to tell what they have coming up, coming? I do. Miko? Go ahead. Hey, John. hey John, this is Chantel Gidry. I'm with Jacob Tilling Hands. Um, yes, we um, actually, um, come October the 1st, we will be opening up a transitional home, but it will be located in Cobb County. Oh. Um, so it's going to be called Jacob's Healing House. And it is going to be for a, um, a transitional home for individuals 55 and older, um, senior, elderly, and with disabilities. Again, it will be located in Cobb County um, off of Offsell Road. And the potential opening date will be 10-1. Um, we have that going on and a lot of uh, the other events that I have is going on um, in Cobb County. Um, you know, with me, I, I'm all over the place <clears throat> doing stuff for the community. Um, we will be serving, it's a shelter called the Extension in, in Cobb County, it's a men's shelter. So on the 22nd, we will be there serving the men um, dinner and fellowshipping with them. Um, so that's all that I have at the moment. Oh, we have a senior old school jam going on on this Friday at, I'm sorry, with this Thursday at the veranda at Scholars Landing. Um, so we'll be doing an old school jam for the seniors. And that's all I have for the moment. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And before I go on, uh, Tamiko, aren't we having somebody, one of us, especially at uh, Team Me, we remember being honored for 9-11 um, for the community service. Is that is that the same event? I believe it is the same event that Miss oh. Idri will be our representing District Five up on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Completely organic, had nothing to do. They told me the news. I said, "Hey, get this." And that's all. That's all I'm saying is the people around here put in work and because y'all do the work out there, I am going to celebrate you. If nobody else, believe you me, I will celebrate you. It's because it's because of you are the reason that our um, cities are so great and that things happen um, as they do. And so uh, congratulations, Ms. Goodger and Jacob Hill and Hand. As don't let, I'm not worried about Cow County being the first. Like, you see me, I'm just like, whatever, because mm -hmm. it's coming down here too. And so as you see all of the efforts that are needed and who to partner with uh, to get these done. And so we are all doers here. And so that, and we do done and we do done well. And so um, as you, we have some more issues. Now you have some more soldiers out there to, to assist and help. 
as uh, this collaboration just grows and gets stronger. And so again, congratulations to you, hats off, well deserved. Uh, you you know, uh, I've been doing this for quite some time and a long time. And so I'm glad to see you get your flowers. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Hi, Corey, this Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson, oh. how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, on the 17, um, the Fairwood HOA having their cleanup, and I did um, email you. I text no, I emailed you that what I needed, and yes, I know you received it. We got you covered, Miss. We got you covered. Okay, thank you. That's on the 17th. Yes, ma'am. Now the 17th as well. Now, what time is that cleanup? Now I'm starting at nine. Right. Now, okay. Now the 17th, you know, I get you the stuff over there, but we also take that's the, also to the day of the old national Mercy Association 5K. So I'll be mm -hmm. over for after that, you know, um event. It starts around the same time. So mm -hmm. but I got you covered. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Anybody Councilman, else? Councilman Reed. Yes, Miss Williams. Williams here. Hey, you also wanted me to remind you that Gloria Odom's um, 91st birthday. 90. The lady. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so 90. Mm -hmm. Remember, you were talking to her son. Right. And right. Right. And when is that day? The 17th, September 17th. The 17th. I'll remind you again. I do. Sorry, my phone was ringing right there. So, if they want to uh, come and we're going to wish and go around and just sing her, like you know, they do little carols. And so, I just mm -hmm. go around to, to people uh, 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 who reach uh, grand old age, and one of our elders is uh, just take them something that you know that they can eat edible, if they sugar free or sugar free cake or some flowers. and. Just sing them happy birthday and just wish them, you know, all the well wishes. And so anybody want to join join me in doing that effort, uh, uh, please do it. We're going to gather around until around about 12 o'clock. I got to go get with her son and it, it confirm that time, but around about noontime. Uh, and I will just send the information. If you want to join me, we'll send you the address that all we'll meet up at. And I just said, let's go, let's go wish her a happy birthday all together. And so um, I think those are the things that we could do to come together as for our elders in our community, that's that's mobile uh, mobile limited, and so, uh, but just let them know that we see them and we are here for them, and so, and that uh, that we're their neighbors, and you know we want to wish them well and uh, on their grand day, special day. Thank you again, Jane, for that reminder. You have given me time to find more announcements, yeah. So here we go. Um, uh, as soon as you brought up the calendar, it made me think of that. So in addition, um, we have the, um, hold on. Uh oh, I'm sorry. I had it on my screen and clicked over to write down what y'all were saying. Um, the South Fulton Chamber Golf Clinic is on uh, September 17th. If they have a couple of slots still open for any um, women that wanna be sponsored to attend the clinic, please send me an email to put your name down. Um, we have the Old National 5K race starting on the 17th at 9 a.m. Um, the Old Nat Day has been rescheduled to, um, I believe, September 18th. Um, yes, Old Nat Day at 2 p.m. in Old National Park. Um, all right, we are getting ready to launch um, our three month safety series with the police department, and we'll be having it at Burdette in the evening, 6 to 8 p.m. on third Tuesdays of each month. So that'll be September 20th of this month. Um, it is going to be a three-part series, which you'll receive a certificate at the end. It's um, going to be addressing um, neighborhood watch, 
um, I, I don't have all the notes in here, but each each night is a different topic. Um, so I have the, the flyer by um, next Monday, but that is coming. It'll be open to anyone who wants to attend. Um, any any other topics while I'm bringing it up that anyone else wants to um, let us know? Oh, Come the in. Fulton County, this is Jane again, Tamika. The Fulton County Downs Gala is also um, the 17th. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This is Angel Payne. I just wanted to remind everyone that this Thursday at 10.30 a.m. at the Gladys Denard Library over off, excuse me, at Flat Shows, we'll, we will be having our monthly meeting and we'll be discussing some concerns that's going on with South Fulton. All righty. The Old National living community initiative meeting will be um september 8th which is thursday and that is at 10 a.m on zoom the city of south fulton's public arts commission will be having a meeting 11 a.m at the southwest arts center um, they are in the process of determining what to do in public art around the city so they're looking for that the uh, main City website is looking for comments for the master art plan. So in the street lights, so please go and put your input in. I think we talked about that last week. You have to put it in before it's too late and it's been out there for a couple months. So I'm sure it's going to be closing soon. So make sure you get your comments turned in. Um, that's it for me. Well, thank you so much. And uh, it is now 7.32. As I promised y'all, I thought we were going to be on about 15, 20 minutes this and there. But, you know, as y'all, we get on, as our energy just start just flowing, you know, as because there's just so much great things that are happening. Um, and I just want to take time out to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your day, particularly your Labor Day, and putting in a Labor Love and joining this call. You didn't have to, but you did. And so I really appreciate that as you want to stay educated and informed. And I hope we hopefully we have done that today. And so you have learned something new and that uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. I love you. You can't do anything about it. And when we do this is I give them this right here is um, 100 One Love Century Cycling Tour as a uh, we 100% love you. We 100% want you here and stay within our ecosystem. We want to grow and help each and every one of you uh, to achieve the best that you can do because you are truly the best part of South Fulton. And this is one more effort to collaborate on with uh, uh, Team Me, We as we grow this collaborative network to meet the metrics and to meet the standards that the people are wanting to have as basically having a return on their investment and the quality of life is number one on the issue. And so as we cycle the world today, we recycle the globe tomorrow. We cycle the globe right. today and we recycle the globe tomorrow. Let's go red, go blue, no go green, because that is the territory we cover and that is we over and we have a great responsibility to it. So let's take care of it. Let's embrace it, let's love it, let's cherish it because it's only one and God ain't making no more soil, but you are the great part and the greatest part of the soil he did create it as you are the constituency of the city of South Fulton. Say something positive, say, say something positive about your city and tell somebody else you love them. And look Why at it, with that, it's the labor of love. And y'all go have an excellent evening. Thank All right. So Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you again, Thank you. Mr. Francis. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Sergeant Bays, and I'm about to give you a call. All right. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Reeves.